Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in again this week. We're so sorry. It's been a while. Obviously, we are out of practice since the season has aired, but we're here with both Aaron and Alex to talk to you all about the Blip versus Black Dragon fight. For some recap, Blip came off of last season in the round of 32 up against Sawblaze, who's the eventual winner of the entire season. And Blip went the full three minutes, so it was a nice challenge. We obviously put up a great fight, and that was the end to Blip's season. That meant that Blip was able to get into one of the Golden Bolt brackets to compete in the final Golden Bolt tournament. And so for Blip's first fight, it was against Black Dragon. I guess sort of that whole process, Aaron, what were you thinking um, coming out of the season and then also going into a Golden Bolt and having to go up against Black Dragon? Yeah, there's some, it's it's fun how they, I'm, I'm happy they do it, but it's always fun how they basically do Golden Bolt bracket bounty, like tournament stuff used to be bounty hunters now this towards the end of the season with regards to letting everybody else uh, basically everybody who brought other toys have more time to more time to play with them um so <clears throat> as with BattleBots, there's also a lot of communication related things so we did manage to effectively sneak into one of the bounty brackets um because we're out early enough that we weren't busy <laughs> as far as being farther in the bracket um, I see a lot of people post online going, where's this robot? I'm like, they're probably doing too well to be in the in the golden bolt brackets. So like, that's kind of why um, you'll notice the top eight doesn't, doesn't usually make an appearance. So in this case, uh, yeah, blip, blip got in and then it was like, all right, you look across all the bounty brackets, uh, you look across everything where you're at and then you go, okay, so. All right. This is one of the harder ones <laughs> for the first fight right out of the gate, which is fun as far as um <clears throat> facing black facing black dragon is i would say they're a pretty flipper resistant robot from a from a durability perspective so it's like all right i'll i will not to dig anywhere else i would take a lot of other robots as the first match as opposed to black dragon so it was it was basically get the robot fully short up and happy and just stop trying to be cute about anything it's it's <laughs> we do it a lot and tends to bite us um so this was just go in and drive, play the match. So, Yeah, definitely. Did Blip do anything in particular to prepare for this fight? Any configurations? I guess you just alluded to the fact that we just wanted to make sure everything was buttoned up. Yeah. So uh, the, the other part I know mentality was going in was, uh, <laughs> sorry, my biggest, I'd say the, the group's biggest collective thing was uh, Blip was making for boring fights because we weren't flipping. Um, we got, we got a, a proper murderer's row of op opponents this year between three giant nut winners, this year's finalists, uh, to face. And that meant a whole lot of matches were, uh, us trying our best of our ability to win the match, but due to how the blip actually behaves, and this is the, the same hardware as last year, um, that meant we didn't get too many flips in from the perspective of our, our flywheel internal inside was off. And I'll chat a little bit more later on with regards to upsides and downsides to that. So one of the biggest things was trying to like actually get some flips because that's the biggest reason I love flippers is watching robots fly through the air. Definitely. So we go into the fight, we keep it simple and Aaron, why don't you walk us through a little bit of what happens? Uh, ow. Uh, <laughs> so Basically, we end up, we get underneath them a few times, get a pin or two on them, and then forget how far through the match, uh, our left side drive speed controller goes up. Um, and that is the same piece of hardware, effectively, that went up in Tantrum in the Blit versus Tantrum fight. So this is one of those, uh, not entirely sure why, we modify the heck out of them. Um, but once once that's done, it was... The match was more exciting from then on than it could have been. Uh, Black Dragon did us the honor of doing what I would say many of Hydra's opponents do, of just drive onto the flipper a few times uh, for us to get some more flips on him. Um, but once the side of drive was out, it was it was effectively over. Uh, so we had a just happily just a speed controller fire. Still have had no battery fires, knocking on wood. Uh, but that was that. Got got knocked out against Black Dragon. Yeah. So it happens. Um, 
I think this year we're also working on develop new speed controllers. I think that definitely sort of not happening just once, but twice to our team inspired some of those efforts. So hopefully it won't happen again. But, you know, as we know here on this team with new stuff, always comes new challenges. So no promises, of course. Um, so unfortunately, Aaron, that led to the end of Blip's career at this filming session. Um, and now sort of if you guys follow us on Instagram or on Facebook, which we highly encourage you do, you can find the links down below, as all the professional YouTubers say. Um, you may have noticed that we've actually also been working on tons of other things, including uh, Multibot, the twins. So um, I guess, Aaron, without having to commit, just so everybody knows, nothing we're saying here is committal because we like to waffle on things and think about things and we might change our minds. Um, what do you think sort of were Blip's biggest flaws? And if you were to rebuild Blip, like what would you want to address? Yeah, we... So like I'm very much always keen, as most people know, on like I would like to try achieving the overall goal of winning, but doing it in a less proven way. Um, as far as trying new stuff to the <laughs> pros and cons come with that one, as you said earlier, for new things come with new growing pains. So um the approach of Blip as a robot for competing in battle bots, when we started working on it, it was before they added sneeze guards all the way around the arena. So the competitive approach there was we're going to take the tech we've developed over a couple of years of Tantrum, uh, both in drivetrain and armor and like robot size and shape knowledge and ground game. And we're going to put make basically make a brick of that with a flipper on top that we have hopes of hitting the ceiling with people. And the biggest thing that changed there was it went from we'd be able to out of the arena people and win a match that way of we could scoop someone, get one good flip and win a match, which is putting it, which would put it on par with a lot of vertical spinners where it's, you get the one good hit and you win the match. Either it's messing up the opponent's ground game or getting a good kill shot on them. Uh, that isn't the case with the, how the arena is currently shaped. So that has definitely been a detriment. And then the other thing that reared its head, uh, <laughs> literally and figuratively for flip doing wheelies was how much worse the gyro problem actually was than initial anticipated uh, initial anticipation. Um, because what happened, and I've explained this through a few things, is if you want the weapon to be scary, the flywheel's got to be spinning. So if for flywheel those, is spinning, if you I can't turn right. Yeah. For those who like obviously haven't kept up with Blip, Blip uses a giant flying disc inside the robot to generate a ton of energy, and that's actually only like this big. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it has a very high moment of inertia, and it's designed that way so that we can spin it up. It takes a long time, relatively speaking, to spin up. But what that means is by grabbing onto that giant spinning mass, we can then really quickly actuate the uh, the flipper. But that spinning mass acts as a hidden vertical weapon inside the robot. So if you've seen verts typically gyro around like this, that's because they've got a big spinning disc. So that's just hidden inside Tantrum. So that when Aaron talks about gyroing, oh. that's what he means. Please continue. Blip. Yeah, <laughs> tantrum is the wider oh, wheelbase, no. similar size MOI, but it's the size of the disc and geometry works better for that one, so it does not have as much of a problem. <laughs> Blip, I'm so sorry. Since, since the flywheel is sideways, the wheel the wheelbase front to back is shorter than it is wide, so that leads to a lot of the wheelies because the the spinning mass inside is actually pretty comparable to tantrum. So. <clears throat> Basically, that makes it so it's either the flywheel is spinning and I have a hard time turning right quickly because that means the robot will do a wheelie. And that is deliberately like the worst ground game move possible is to lift your entire front end off the ground. Um, or it's not spinning and it drives really well and you get underneath people and then you have the production crew going, why didn't you flip saw blades? I'm like, because I couldn't. We were underneath them, but the flywheel was off. So it's once you dig it underneath somebody, it's like, please hold. Like, don't leave. Just give me a sec. Okay. And now fire. So uh, after that fight with the interview with Chris and Kenny, like I did mention, like the current iteration of Blip is retired. Uh, we have plans in the future for one that does not have gyro problems and saw some of, some of the other interesting uh, <clears throat> things to come up with a reason why we think of flipper could win battle bots aside from just flippers are cool right well so i mean we can redesign the robot all we want but until the arena changes either back to what it was or with some new uh 
out of the Reno zones or equivalent, it's pretty dumb to bring a flipper. I think everybody yep. that's built a flipper and has a flipper in the event agrees. And that the only reason we do it still is because it's cool and fun. But yeah, like there has to be some push and pull from robot design, but also from how the competition is structured if they want a flipper to ever do super well. Yeah, because the the shelf kind of came about because it happened the same time the sneeze guards went on. Like, so it's <laughs> the oh, we can't they can't flip out anymore. So let's have this shelf. But then there's gonna be walls around it. But then everyone went, don't put walls around it. And then now there's no walls. So it's like okay, now it's everyone just hates it now. So okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's always like you can only go so far with the face value of I want to build a flipper because they're awesome versus I would like to also win with it. So it's you got to figure out how to make that work. And sometimes it doesn't. That's the nature of the game, I suppose. The game we all play. <laughs> the twins have been a lot of fun so far, though. So. That's true. Hopefully we'll be able to tell you all more about them in a larger comprehensive video next time. We've been to Proving Grounds twice now. Um, been able to do a ton of testing, a ton of iteration. So, you know, hopefully when next season comes around, we'll have something cool to show you all. Anyhow, thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you have any questions, leave them below. Make sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook. We also have another round of eBay parts coming out. So look out for the Blip and Black Dragon ones and Tantrum fights later this week as well. So make sure to tune into Discovery Channel and it's the final episode of the Golden Bolt. It should be really exciting. Tantrum is fighting Ripperoni first um, and that's bound to be a crazy fight either way. <laughs> so make sure you tune into that. And yeah, thank you all again so much. And thank you to our sponsors as well. Yeah, speaking of that, keep an eye out on the NHRL pages. There's an NHRL All-Star event coming up in December and Alex is very toasty robot, Dutch oven. So we'll go from facing Ripperoni with Tantrum to Dutch oven cooking some people in small robots. So keep keep an eye out for that robot there. Yeah, yeah, it should be fun. And also just plugging it because we're already at it. Uh, NHRL Finals is this weekend, so make sure to tune in. It should be an exciting one. So Great. Thank you. See y'all. Thanks. Bye. Bye.